What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up Redux Observable with Redux Form. That way when you submit your form, you can submit it off to a server and do async stuff. So okay, so I just have a basic Redux Form set up. If you're not sure how to do this, um, I have a previous video showing you how to and I'll link it in the description below and you can follow that to get to this point. Um, and then I'm, what I'm doing with my Redux Form here is I'm just basically submitting, I'm submitting some data, um, first name, last name, email, um, and then that's causing a action to dispatch, and then I'm gonna catch that action with my um, Redux Observable and actually um, call um, the server and send this data. So right now I have like a Feathers.js server just running in the background. You can use any server, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I just have this simple React app that's running. And that's basically just some boilerplate I have set up. So the first thing you wanna do to uh, get this going is to do yarn r add rxjs and redux observable. I already added these so I didn't have to run this. Um, you can also do npm install, that works as well. Just like that and get those two packages. So you're gonna have, wanna include rxjs in like one of your root um, files. For me, this is the outer layer of the index file. So source index, and that's where I put the basically outer shell of my app. And then you just wanna import rxjs because we're gonna be using some of these functions. Um, next, i am created a epics folder and I just put an index.js. We'll get to there next. Next thing is to get Redux Observable working is to actually set it up with some uh, our store. So what I did is I imported create epic middleware from Redux Observable and I imported root epic from dot slash epics. And we're getting that root epic from here. And this is something we're about to actually make. Um, and then I just created the middleware and then I did apply middleware, which is something from Redux right here. Okay, so you just need to add those things. This is what my uh, Redux store looks like. Um, and now I'll be listening for actions with our epics. And I'll show you how this works. Now if we go to epics index, I have a little bit of boilerplate code here. Um, at the top here, I have some import statements. We're gonna be using this from promise. Um, this is really nice. I'll explain it when we actually use it. We're going to be using combine epics. That's here at the bottom. It's very similar to um, uh, if you've seen with Redux um, combine reducers, where you can have multiple reducers um, split up. It's just like that for epics. I'm using combine epics, where you can have multiple epics, and then you combine them into one, and then you pass that off and put it into your store. So, for example, if I have more, um, maybe a login epic and you can have a bunch of different ones. For now, I just have one, and this um, is basically what our root epic that we were importing in our store, so I'm exporting that here. And then start and stop submit. These are actions from Redux form, and this just allows us to pass back errors um, to our Redux form in case we pass the data and we do it in the wrong format or something pops up, because the server is going to do some validation itself. Okay, so this function right here is something I made in a prior video, and I'll just explain it real quick how it's working. Um, this is an async function, and it is using the new uh, await and uh, syntax from uh, the new JavaScript uh, ECMAScript stuff. I forget that, I think it's 2017 um, is where await comes from. I could be wrong though. But here it is, so the syntax may look a little foreign if you're unfamiliar, but I'll explain it. So what we're doing is we're making a post request to th this URL. This is the where I have my server running, and I have a route set up register. Um, so you can see I pass in the URL, and then the second parameter to fetch is an object. Um, this is just saying I'm making a post request with the method, and then I want to get JSON or I'm passing JSON, I put here, and then what it, uh, I'm expecting some JSON data, an object, to be passed to this function, and then I just pass that uh, with my post request. 
And so I actually make the post request, and then this await um, just waits, it makes this um, synchronous. So it waits until the fetch is complete, and then it passes that into response, and then all we're doing is we're returning um, the JSON from this response, and again, we're waiting for that. And then we wrap this in a try catch. If there's any error when we're trying to fetch, we'll catch it and we'll return the error. And then right here, this is our actual epic. So right here, um, we're gonna have to write this right now. This is just the start of every epic. So the name of my epic, I call it register epic. And then action dollar sign. Um, this is basically just used for this part right here. Um, this just means I'm listening for this action. So request submit. If I come over here to my actions, oops, not this action, my component actions, you can see your request submit is right here. So when I submit my form, I'm dispatching that action and I'm listening for that right here. And then the second parameter to this function is basically just gives you uh, access to the Redux store. So I can dispatch and see the state of things. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically chain off of this. So we're listening for request submit. Whenever a request comes in, what we'd like to do is we'd like to basically um, start submitting. So start submit, and we're gonna do contact. Contact is the name of my Redux form. Um, dot do is something from Redux Observable, and it's basically, uh, you can think of it almost like a side effect. It's something that doesn't return anything. Um, if you're not too familiar with how Redux Observable works, basically it takes in an action and it returns an action. So um, action in, action out. So right here we're taking in a request submit um, action, and then what we will need to do is at the end we need to actually spit out an action. So what this does is here we're saying we don't want to submit an action with here, we just want to basically do something um, and what we want to do is we want to start a submit. So we need to chain more things because we actually need to return an action. Okay, so we started the submit for our contact form. Um, this is necessary so we can stop the submit if we have any errors. Okay, so next we're going to um, flat, not flatten, merge map. This is, uh, again, something that's coming from Redux Observable, um, or RxJS, one of the two. I believe it's RxJS, actually. Um, and I can just put a semicolon there, because the rest of our stuff is going in here. So what merge map does is it takes the return value from um, here. So we're gonna do some things um, and here we're actually gonna put from promise. This allows us to call our submit to server, passing in action.data. So we pass in a first name, last name, and email, and uh, as parameters to our action. And then we just have it, and we can access it with this dot data. And we can call this function. So this from promise here, um, what merge map is doing is it's taking this, whatever this is returned, and it's basically returning it here. If we did map, it would return an observable, I believe, and what we want to return is actually an action here. So it basically takes this observable and gets the return value of it and gets the action. You can think of this almost very similar to a map, um, as the name states, I guess. So, okay. So we did from promise, we call our submit to server, and now we want to basically look at the return value. So we do dot map, and then we take in uh, basically the return value. So we can say response from the server, and then we can look at it. We can say if response dot errors, we can return type action, so maybe request failed, and then we can pass in the error, or the errors, response to errors, and then we can say else, maybe it didn't, and we can return t 
type request successful. And that's pretty much all you need for a um, epic. So if we run this, it should go ahead and work. I want to add a few more things though. Um, and before I do though, so this return value right here or right here, these actions, um, you'll notice it's going to go up the chain. It's going to return here um, and it's going to return here. And that's going to be basically the return of this function is either this action or this action. So we took request submit. Um, and then we say whether it failed or was successful at the end after we make um, our call to our server. And you'll notice this will wait until this from promise is complete. So I just want to console.log response so we can see um, any errors that we get and what the response is. And then I also want to dispatch the uh, stop submit action. And so I want to do contact and then I want to pass in the errors, which is response dot errors. And if it's undefined, we just want to pass in an empty object. And actually right here, we want to dispatch start submit because that's an action as well. So you can see why we wanted to grab dispatch so we can spit out these act extra actions. Um, Let's see this running in action. So come on over here. So if you remember how my server is set up, if my first name and last name are the same value, it'll throw back an error. This is just for purposes so we can see an error. So if I submit this, you notice we get this, it tells us it's bad, and you notice we get a bad request to our server. That's what we expect. And our server says, um, last name has to be different from the first name, and you can see it displays that here exactly how we want to. But maybe I change it up a little bit. Now I submit. You notice we don't get an error. And here's the response from the server. It created this Bob2 object. So that is how you set up Redux Observable. Um, and you make a call to a server um, and get the response. Uh, and this is triggered from a Redux form. Now, um, this stop submit, we can, you notice how response.errors. Um, Ours is nicely formatted. You know how last name here matches um, basically the name of my Redux form here? You, yours might not be as nicely formatted. Um, your error from the server. So you might need to reformat this and be like last name and then basically error message. You put your error message as a string there. But we don't have to worry about that. You'll have to play with that to get that to work depending on how your server is set up. So that is how this um, is working. If you're not too familiar with RxJS, this might look super foreign. Um, I recommend just, uh, it's, it's a very different pattern of basically doing async code. I, I am, I'm actually really liking it, but as you can see, it can look a little foreign if it's your first time and it takes some learning. It's a steeper learning curve um, than some of the other libraries. So take a look at this. Um, Try to code it yourself, play around with it, play around with these functions. I'd recommend if you're first time to RxJS, you do some tutorials online and play around, get used to that if you're if this interests you. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or any trouble setting this up um, with your with your app or your website, please let me know. I'd be happy to help and see um, what the trouble is. So thank you guys.